Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast. Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang sandiga ng sambayanan mula sa walang labis at walang kulang na pagbabalita, paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na henerasyon. Buhay Online Sikahan at kalamang pangkabuhayan. Ating tunghayan, pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online. Buhay online, sikahan at kaalamang pangkabuhayan. Alamin ang pinakalatest trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang saan na ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito. At ngayon, narito na ang ating host, ang ating Teki Mami, si J.C. Bautista. Hello, hello, hello! Happy Friday, everyone! Tama, Friday na naman, Diyos mio. Napakabilis talaga ng pagdaan ng mga araw. It's Friday once again, <clears throat> and of course, this is my last day of broadcast for the week because Monday to Friday po lang mga ating programa. But of course, you know, uh, I'm always glad to be able to help. I, I'm always glad to be able to broadcast and give you some good tidings, some good information. Okay, Tung lahat tungkol po sa mga bagay-bagay involving buhay online, right? But of course, we've been talking about the subject of distance learning kasi nga po, di ba, um, more than a year and a half after uh, this pandemic situation, ay hindi pa rin po nagbubukas ang ating mga skwelahan ng face-to-face -face learning. That's why po, uh, tinalakay po natin yung distance learning kasi kinamusta natin yung how Uh, our country uh, and our educational system is coping up with this distance learning. Kasi ho, di ba, as na pag-usapan natin, uh, distance learning per se, uh, on, which involves modular modular learning, tsaka yung online learning. Pero na, ang pinag-usapan natin muna yung modular learning, uh, na nagkaroon na rin ng mga problema, because to recap that, to wrap it up, of course, to recap, ano yung mga naging problema? yung printed material po was not enough nung nag nung nag nagsara yung eskwelahan nung initial salvo ng pag-aaral the school year 2020 to 2021 it found um a lot of uh quirks it a lot of kinks nung sa sistema kasi unang-una uh, kulang yung mga printed material nung panahon na yon may mga mali-mali sa material tapos ganun din sa online learning the of course In March 2020, we were not ready to transition from face-to-face -face learning to online. Yung mga materials po, uh, hindi pa masyadong ready at the time, uh, whether private school or public school. Uh, nakita natin yung mga problema nun na parang nag-suffer yung quality ng education at the same time, yung motivation ng mga bata medyo bumaba, right, sa pag-aaral. So, Uh, I, okay, just in, no, today, July 9, 2021, at 7.17 this morning, okay, the world, okay, remember kahapon pinag-usapan ko po yung kung paano nag-deteriorate yung ating educational system dito sa Pilipinas, lalo na nung itong pandemic naka, nakalala pa. Dahil yung ranking natin sa, sa Asia, di ba, bumaba yung, uh, yung ranking, pinakita nila na kulelat tayo sa science at math sa pag-aaral, di ba? pating English speaking natin nagdeteriorate. Well, today, this morning nga sa World Bank News, okay, sa Rappler, uh, July 9, 2021, 7:17 ng umaga, ang World Bank po, okay, okay, ay nag-apologize to the Philippines over the damning education report. 'Di ba pinakita ko 'yang kahapon? Uh, ito actually meron pa ako dito. Ito, yung pinakita ko kahapon na The Philippine 
lags behind, okay? Kulela tayo. Second na lang to the last, okay? Yan yung pinakita ko kahapon. Anyway, today, nagpalabas ang World Bank ng press release, okay? And through Rappler, nakita ko po yan. At sinabi nila na nag-apologize sila, okay? Manila, Philippines. We deeply regret that the report on education was inadvertently published earlier than scheduled and before the Department of Education had enough chance to provide inputs, sabi ng World Bank. After mga skating remarks from officials, the World Bank before midnight on Friday, July 9, apologized to the Philippine government and took down a report on its website describing poor learning results among Filipino students. Okay? Pinalita ko pa lang yung kahapon kasi nga lumabas yung kahapon. So ngayon binabawi nila yon. We deeply regret that the report on education was inadvertently published earlier than scheduled and before the DepEd had, had enough chance to provide inputs. Ayan ang sabi ng World Bank. Education Secretary Leonor Briones earlier demanded an apology from the multilateral lender as she claimed that it did not follow protocol protocol in releasing the information or the report, adding that the figures cited in the study were outdated. Okay? Kasi nga, sa 2018 uh, re results. Okay? The country was insulted and shamed, sabi ni Briones, noong Monday, July 5. Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III backed up Briones, blasting the World Bank for its lack of professionalism. Ala, nagalit talaga. Okay? Paano kaya papakita itong ano? Uh, how am I gonna show? Hindi ko mapakita yung video. But anyway, there's a video na, ayan, nagagalit si Secretary, Secretary Leonor Briones. Alright? So, ano, I'm gonna show you the link na lang and put the link, okay? I'm going to put the link para I'm gonna put the link here, okay? Ayan. Yan yung link. Pwede yung tingnan yan. Nandyan yung video ni Secretary. Ayan, a World Bank apologizes, right? Okay? Yan ang aking pinag-uusapan ngayon. So, the World Bank said that it was an oversight on their part and decided to temporarily remove it from its website. Ano, dapat lang naman kasi nga mali, okay? Outdated and kawawa naman tayo masyado. Pero baka naman instead of second to the last, third to the last, sana naman yung resulta mas maging better, right? The World Bank also said, okay, that we agree with the department that the issue of quality has a long historical context. Tsaka ang support, and support its demonstrated commitment to resolve it decisively. We have reached out to Secretary, Secretary Briones on this matter and look forward to continuing to continuing our dialogue with the Department of Education on the opportunities and challenges in the education sector, sabi ng World Bank, okay? The World Bank has been a partner of the Philippines for 75 years, providing loans and grants to support sectors including education. The Philippines funds its conditional cash transfer program through the World Bank loans. A condition of the cash grant includes requiring families to send children to schools. Sabi ni Briones, the Philippines has loaned at least $300 million from the World Bank since the 1980s to improve the state of education in the country. So, you know, so, ang DepEd ahead, uh, Leonor Briones demands, demanded an apology from the World Bank for the Philippines poor education ranking that they gave, okay? But what was in the report ba, okay? The report enumerated several gaps in the Philippines education sector, many of which are all too familiar. For instance, the World Bank noted that majority of 15-year-olds do not understand fractions. Ayan ang sinabi nila. The report also said that only 10% of Filipino 5th graders were at par with global standards due to students' limited proficiency in the language of instruction, which is mostly in English. Oh, it is also found that bullying was prevalent across all levels and that school officials were not aware on the gravity of the violence in schools. Sa mga findings na ito, yung World Bank concluded that there was a crisis in education sa Pilipinas, which has started even before the coronavirus pandemic. Meron na nga tayong struggles 
dito sa pandemic, di ba, yung mga module errors na pinag-usapan natin, due to the continuing coronavirus pandemic, schools in the country have shifted ga to distance learning, which is a mix of online classes and printed learning modules, following President Rodrigo Duterte's directive to suspend face-to-face -face classes. Uh, again, I mean, hindi na nga tinuloy yung sabi kasi before the, nag, nag, uh, nag uh, request ang DepEd kung pwedeng mag-open ang face-to-face -face classes dun sa mga low-risk areas. Kaso lang, because of the emergence of the Delta variant or the Indian virus and the UK virus, minabuti na ng ating Pangulo na hindi pa rin buksan ang face-to-face -face classes itong coming school, incoming school year 2021-2022. So, wala pa rin face-to-face -face classes even in low-risk areas. Okay? Okay? So, under the, dis the distance learning system, parents have an active role in guiding their children through modular lessons, which pose a problem for students who do not have anyone to help them learn at home or whose parents are both working or the parents are incapable of teaching them kasi nga hindi nakapag-aral. Kaya nga, di ba doon sa mga ibang area, sa mga ating mga less fortunate brethren, or less fortunate uh, mga kapatid, ay... Kaya nga sila nagkakanda po ba magtrabaho para ang makaahon sila sa kahirapan at para ang mga anak nila ay makapag-aral kasi sila hindi nakapagtapos. So, ayan ang dilemma ng modular lessons. Walang magtuturo sa mga anak. That's why, ang nangyari nga dyan, you know, for special cases ang talagang walang magkakaturo, the mga guro, you know, have taken it upon themselves to go to the, those students who, need spe who have special needs and mentor them and help them. At the same time nga, yung anxiety ng mga teachers at magulang na magkaroon sila ng coronavirus because itong modular learning, right? Once a week, you have to pick up the, your, the, the learning materials and the activity sheets. Tapos at the end of the week, sasubmit mo ulit sa teacher public yung na-accomplish na, na ng anak mo. Pero yun ang problema. Yung mga teacher, at saka yung mga teacher, nagbabahay-bahay rin sila para to check on the progress of their kids. Pero in, in, in so doing, there's, there's physical contact, right? At uh, yun nga, sinabi nila yung tungkol sa mga papel and stuff na iaabot mo sa teacher, hindi mo alam kung saan ang galing yun, kung sino mga kasama sa bahay nung, nung bata. Or that near fact na yung plastic na, na sinabi ng ibang ibang teacher, ni-require nila plastic envelope ang paglagyan, eh, it stays on plastic for what? 72 hours ang virus. So yun yung mga naging concerns, yung mga teachers na at mga magulang regarding modular learning, okay? Because you see, like we said, parents bear the brunt of distance learning as classes shift online. Because nga, nag, na, 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 if you call this, the parents were given a, added responsibility because of distance learning. I mean, really, tanggapin na natin yung fact na yun na because nga yung mga teachers wala sa actual classroom, tayong mga magulang ang naging second teachers or Hindi pa yun. Pag monitor sa mga anak natin to make sure, lalo na yung mga studying online, that they are using their time to really study and not watch Netflix or play games or or do social media uh, postings, right? Pero yun na rin nga, isa rin yan sa pitfalls ng pag-aaral online. The distraction that it, 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 it is giving or doing for our kids. Hindi naman natin sila pwedeng bantayan 24 hours dahil nagtatrabaho tayo. Ako, I'm mostly 24-7 online because of the work that I do. And I only have to trust my son to know na nag-aaral siya, right? Pero ayun nga talaga, the parents was are bearing the brunt of this distance learning thing. Okay? The gaps, and, uh, the gaps in the Philippine education system were also evident in the the faulty or or, or, or mga wrong Mga, mero mga mali na learning modules. Yan pinag-usapan natin. It, it, it was distributed to students during the pandemic. Okay? Uh, mishaps such as painful grammar errors, wrong math equations, and depictions of gender stereotypes alarmed a public already worried over the quality of education over 24 million students were receiving during this pandemic. Hi there, Jake. Good morning, Jake. Nice to see you always. I'm always happy to have you on the show. Si Jake Elizar po is a very talented and smart 
uh, young uh, student, okay, na, na ano ba, okay, nakabaga graduate Jake. He's also, um, of course, he's a uh, he's a very very smart student and a diligent one at that. Pero uh, very very talented din yan kasi graphite uh, graphite artist siya. Nagdrawing siya ng mga portraits, right, using graphite, right, very good. So, minsan nga ano mag mag-post ka diyan ng link kung kung saan nila pwedeng ma-view yung mga gawa mo. July 16 ang ano? Ang school? Akala ko ba August? Anong July 16, Jake? July 16 is what? But anyway, so yun na nga, those are the things that we encountered with, with this distance learning. Painful grammar errors sa, sa mga materials, sa mga modules, okay? Ah! Oh my gosh, congratulations sa virtual graduation daw ni, ni Jake ay sa July 16. Kaya nga, because we are not allowed face-to-face -face graduations also. So lahat ng mga graduation virtual pa rin. Okay, congratulations to you, Jake. Alright, good job. Okay, so... um. Going back to our topic, right? Ayun ang mga problema ng modular learning, mga maling materials, okay? Tapos, sabi, uh, di ba? Humihingi uh, ng, okay? Humihingi ang ang ating DepEd ng pat ng hingi ng apology because nga do sa nangyari, right? Pero ayun pa, okay? So, so, ang World Bank ay humingi na ng apology sa atin para sa wrong information tungkol sa ating education system. Thank you. Maraming salamat po sa pag-amin na inyong pagkakamali. So, going back to the mga mali namang impormasyon or maling mga materials, okay? Ang mga maling impormasyon sa depth and distance learning materials, okay? Pag-usapan natin ngayon, okay? Paano makakasiguro nga abos sa lahat ng studyante ang mga corrections? Well, maraming problema hinaharap ang distance learning sa Pilipinas, especially in this pandemic, okay? Nandiyan na ang kakulangan sa access at dagdag pa sanin sa mga estudyante, magulang at sa mga guro. This past few months, mula nang nagbukas ang panibagong school year, isa na namang problema ang umusbong, ang mga maling impormasyon sa mga distance learning materials ng Department of Education. That's right. The, these are the wrong information disseminated, okay, through the learning materials, okay? Okay, so uh, Rappler tackled this issue, okay, last month, okay? Uh, of course, by, by uh, through Bonds Magsambol, ang ating, my aking good resource of uh, things about education in the Philippines. Siya ang re at siyang research writer niyang si Jodes Gavilan, ang quality assurance na ginawa nila tungkol sa learning materials. Bakit nga ba may mga nakakalusot na pagkakamali? Remember, the other day I told you about the aswang issue na dinipik yung aswang as a sexual predator instead of na folklore na nag nag, 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 nag nagsasak ng blood or kumakain ng tao, ginawa nilang sexual predator yung aswang dun sa module materials. Okay, mali-mali, okay? Uh, Ang mga maling impormasyon sa learning modules ay isa sa mga problema sa educational system sa Pilipinas. This is according to uh, according to Bonds Magsambol, ang aking very good resource material palagi tungkol sa education. Napansin ko na it's telling a sign na sobrang problematic ang, ng education system natin dito sa bansa. Ang dami pang kailangan ayusin. Itong mga concepts na ito, pinag-aaralan ng mga bata, milyon ang makakatanggap, tapos mali, right? Talaga naman, di ba? That's, that's what I said yesterday. Millions of students studying modular, doing modular education kasi nga, ito ay yung mas maraming uh, mag-aaral. This is the choice of most of the parents because because nga of the disparity, the, the digital disparity, disparity na hindi lahat nakaka-afford na mag-online mag education because unang-una walang internet, walang gadgets, right? So, mas marami ang modular. Kaso nga, yung milyon-milyon na katanggap ng material, mali pa, right? Paano nangyari yun? Pa, like I said nga yesterday, paano yung mga nag -e edit di ba nila inaayos yung trabaho nila? Napaka-glaring ng mga, ng mga pagkakamali eh, right? So, sabi nga ni, um, sabi ni, sabi ni, sabi ni, um, excuse me, ni Bonds Magsambol, right? Itong mga concept na to, pa, paano nila, hindi na nakikita yung mali. Itong pandemic na highlight niya yung mga gaps sa education system. Nakakatakot siya kasi, imagine mo, wala pang two months itong, itong, 
yung school year last year, tapos ganito ang pagkakamali na lumalabas. So, what more pa if hindi tayo naka-distance learning at hindi natin nakikita yung learning modules na yun? Ibig sabihin ba, dumadaan na lang yun at hindi na ko-correct? So, so, yung mga bata nabibigyan ng maling information. Yes, because even through the years, diba, this has been happening before sa, dep sa mga school materials, sa mga books, may mga errors. My God, I have been proofreading and correcting errors na ganyan. Because even online learning, ganun din. Yung materials may mga mali. Paano makakasiguro nga abo sa lahat ng sadyate ang corrections? Pakinggan, okay, alright. Sasabihin natin, right? Na dito, of course, nangyari nga yung sabi nila, of course, sabi ng DepEd, a year more than a year after this na ayos na rin mga mali na to. Yun yung pinakalatest na pagkakamali is yung tungkol sa aswang issue na kinorek na rin nila. Pero yun na nga, mas marami na nga yung printed material kasi nung una tayong nag-online uh, learning, I mean, or distance learning, kulang yung mga materials na pinarit. Yung mga teachers at saka mga skwela, sila pa nag-print at pinotocopy nila yung mga materials. Pero ngayon, di ba, there was allotted about 4 billion or more billion budget for education na dapat ginamit sa mga materials na yan. Okay? So, so yan yung issue dyan tungkol sa mga maling materials. Alright? So, in retrospect, okay, to talk about all the things that we, the, to recap what we've talked about this whole week, okay? Um, uh, I also talked about, okay, how, to, isa, isa sa issue dito sa, pag, sa distance learning is staying connected. How students work together amidst this, this distance learning, all right? Uh, case in point, again, itong pag-uusapan natin, okay, itong isa, let me just show you. Okay, let me just get this. Uh, let me get this graphic, okay? Kasi importante. Sorry. So, sandali lang. Kukunin ko lang. I-grab ko lang, alright? And show you what I'm going to talk about. Alright. So, ilagay natin. Oops. Sorry. Alright. How are the children naman coping pa about this, right? It's staying connected and staying and communicating. Ayon importante. Hold on a second. Let me just. Sorry. Okay. Distance. Okay. Alright. Okay. Eto na. Kwanting na lang tis. But thank you. Welcome to those people who are joining me for this episode. Happy Friday sa inyong lahat. Um. Buhay online po, Jay Bautista, nasa inyong, sa inyong kapiling, talking about distance learning pa rin, okay? Because this is a big issue talaga, how our kids are coping up with studies nowadays, okay? Alright, okay, ito. Ito, ito ang isang bata, alright? Ayan, okay? Talking about, okay, alright. So, let's go back to what I was saying, alright? Na, the struggles of distance learning have prompted some students to lend a hand to make sure that no one gets left behind. The new normal in education left students and teachers fending for themselves in a time of uncertainty. Talaga naman talaga. Yung pressure ay napunta sa teachers, studyante, at magulang. This, this captures the story of this grade 6 student, okay? Si Ella Jane Perol and her classmates. Bothered by her section's incomplete attendance sa klase, she volunteered to teach her peers who are trying to cope with school requirements. Di ba, pinag-usapan din natin yan kahapon. Napakadami kasi activities, napakadaming requirements. So, anong, anong naging resulta nun? Yung pandadaya, academic cheating or dishonesty. Hindi mo kasi maalis naman dahil sa dami ng kailangan i-comply with. Sabi nga nung si Grace, yung, yung person na finature ko na gumagawa ng homework para sa mga ibang tao at minabayaran. Hindi mo masisisi yung mga ibang estudyante kasi yun na nga, ang learning ang learning uh, ang learning tuloy ay nag, nag-suffer. So kasi ang ginagawa ng mga estudyante para makapag-comply na lang sila doon sa mga requirements ng teachers, yun ang ginagawa nila. They sought other people's help. Yung magulang nila, hindi sila matulungan dahil nga hindi nakapag-aral. So ang nagawa nila yun, makahanap sila ng kagaya ni Grace nagagawa ng school paper, gagawa ng homework nila, right? 
for a fee, of course. Pero yun, nagkaroon, nagkaroon tuloy ng academic dishonesty. Dahil nga, of course, di natin nakikita yung gumagawa ng assignment. So, yun. And in some cases pa, yung magulang ng gumagawa ng homework. So, okay. So, going back to my my issue here about si, itong si grade 6 uh, student, Ella Jane Perol. Why did she go the extra mile of helping her classmate? Kasi, she him, simply hopes none of her classmates would fail or be left behind. Nung December 2020, okay, all right, Teachers Dignity Coalition reported that their group found a decrease in students attending online classes and submitting their completed learning modules. Despite the numbers, Education Undersecretary Diosdado San Antonio said that the drop in online learning use should not alarm all of us. Talaga, just ko, eh, hindi ba? 3 million nga ang hindi nag-enroll last year, itong school year 2020 to 2021. Okay? Because he was he cited other digital learning modes that don't require internet access. Well, during school days, itong si Perol, itong bata, okay, would patiently wait for her friends to go online so she could help them cope with a seemingly endless pile of schoolwork. She would send them photos of her work and then carefully explain how she came up with the answers. Hindi naman parang pangangopyo to, di ba? Inspired by Ella's initiative, students Julia Lauron and Jasmine and Hasmin Ortiz also lent their helping hands to their classmates in need. With the help of the three tutors, teacher Sabrina Onkiko noticed that more students started attending classes and, and submitting schoolwork. Pina nga kasi, because sa kawalan ng, ng help, di ba, nag-resort dun sa academic cheating. Pero yun nga, kung meron mga kagaya nitong mga sila Sabrina, uh, sila, itong sila Jasmine, or itong sila Perol na tutulong, mamamotivate din yung mga estudyante mag-aral. Kasi nga, hindi na nga sila nakakapag-face-to-face na mga nakukonfer with each other eh. So, somehow, the students found a way, yun nga, to chat and to talk to each other and help. With, sa lahat ng sinubukan naming intervention sa klase, ito ang pinaka nag-work. Yung merong kaklasing may pakialam sa kaklase niya. Pakiramdam ko rin tuloy bilang teacher, di ako nag-iisa. Ito ang sabi ni Ong Kiko, si Sabrina Ong Kiko. Okay? All right. Actually, uh, to translate, of course, out of all interventions we've tried in class, this was the most effective, that there's a student who cares for her classmates. I felt as a, that as a teacher, I was not alone. Okay? Ito nga sabi nitong si Sabrina o Kiko, meron akong sudyante na nagsimula ng revolusyon sa klase ko. Nag-volunteer siya mag-tutor sa mga kaklase niyang naghahabol. Ngayon, tatlo na silang tutor at nag-improve ang attendance. Dumami ang nagpapa, nag, ang pumapasa. What a revolution, di ba? Walang extra grade, hindi required mag-tutor. Hirap din minsan sa load, madami rin siyang kailangan sagutin at aralin. Naisip lang niya nagawin kasi sabi niya, para makapag-graduate po kami lahat ng sabay-sabay. See? See, I think this pandemic also, this pandemic situation has brought about a lot of unity and and um, and uh, and being mindful of others, right? Magtulong-tulong tayo because like that, lalo na yung mga mag-aaral na ganyan, you know, it should be commended na mas marami ang nag-care about others itong sa pandemya na to. Although other learning platforms are available, students still need internet access so they can send questions and updates to their classmates tsaka sa mga teachers. But even with online communication platforms, some of Ellis' classmates remained unresponsive. Naramdaman ko po yung hirap at sakrapisya ni Ma'am Sabrina. Bigla ko pong naisip na turuan yung mga kaklase ko. She said that I felt the difficulties and sacrifices of teacher Sabrina. So I came up with the idea to teach my classmates and help, right? Ito pa ang naging problema. The cost of learning amidst this COVID-19, di ba? Si Ella isa, isa, isa lamang sa mga many learners who don't have access to gadgets needed for online classes. At home, they only have one working cell phone and a tablet provided by her school, which she shares with her older sister. Sabi nga niya ni Ella, sana wag bawiin ang tablet. Promise talaga, mas gagalingan ko talaga. Her mother said, Ella told me, I hope they don't take away my tablet. I promise I'll do better. Okay? In the Philippines, distance learning is a luxury that only the privileged can afford. Yun nga eh, nagkaroon tuloy yung lalo ng disparity between rich and poor at saka yung digital divide. Okay? A brand new desktop computer that, that meets 
DepEd's minimum requirements costs around 18000 okay? While basic tablets and smartphones are cheaper options that sell for around 2000 to 3000 okay? In 2020, some students even tried to raise funds online so they could buy the necessary equipment they needed for distance learning. Through online campaign, uh, campaign na Piso Para Sa Laptop, okay, that was last year, students took their calls for donations on social media hoping to collect enough money para makabili lang ng kanilang mga cellphone or tablet or computer. Okay? However, these devices are nothing without a stable internet connection, right? It boils down to that. Kung wala ka namang data na mahusay or internet connection, paliwala yung gadgets mo, right? Okay? Data from the National Telecommunications Commission show that as of December 2019, only 67% of Filipinos have access to the internet. Ayun na nga. Kaya nga, nag-resort to modular learning, right? Kaya nga, almost more than 73% or 63% na nag-aaral opted to do modular learning. Kasi nga, because of the kawalan ng funds, kawalan ng means, di ba? While yung Kulyat Elementary School granted mobile load to Ella every month, there have been instances when telecommunications providers were unable to send these monthly allocations. Kasi mga iba parang scholar. During such times, the young girl would use her parents' phone to see photos that classmates and teachers send her. Considering her classmates' situations, Ella urged teachers to give more leeway for students who could not finish their modules due. Kasi nga, di ba sinabi ko sa inyo, yung example, Eight modules na binibigay sa estudyante. Yun na nga, itong, itong, the son of my, uh, of my fiancé, Jenny. Okay, he does modular education. They are given eight modules in a week to, to complete. And bawat module ay meron between three to five activities. Okay, so ilan yun? Kung five times eight na rin, 40 activities in a week, paano mo yun i-fulfill? Paano mo yun i-comply with? Mahirap, masyadong marami, right? Okay, so uh, a year and a half after this, uh, this, through the pandemic, are we gearing towards a better normal? While many students think that distance learning is not the best way to be educated, the resumption of face-to-face -face classes feels like a far-fetched dream because now of the emergence of these new mga viruses, the variants, okay? Hindi na nga pinayagan kahit nandun sa mga low-risk areas. As of June 11 this year, the country recorded over 1.3 million COVID-19 cases, of which 61, more than 61,000 are active. Only 1% of the Philippine population has been fully vaccinated against the virus as of June, okay? The government hopes to vaccinate around 70 million Filipinos by the end of this year to achieve herd immunity, all right? Pag na-achieving herd immunity, Medyo pwede na tayong bumalik sa normal unti-unti. Well, pero nung, uh, uh, of course, like I said, as of June 2022, hindi pa rin pinayagan ng presidente ang in-person classes, okay? Sinabi niya pala nung June 2020 na unless yung vaccine ay makarating na sa Pilipinas, hindi pa niya papayagan ng school ang face-to-face -face learning. Nakaabot na nga ang vaccine, na-vaccinate na mostly most of the people from NCR, the Metro Manila, pero because nga, dumating yung mga bagong variant ng virus, nandito na sa Pilipinas rin, binawi niya ngayon yung sabi niya na bubuksan na niyang face-to-face -face dun sa low-risk areas kapag ka nandiyan na yung vaccine. So, to date, wala. Wala pa rin face-to-face -face classes, okay? So, so, sa school year na papasok, which is 2021-2022, it's still going to be distance learning for everyone. So, sorry to say, but that is the way it is going to be. And we don't know. So, we don't really know kung kailan babalik. Nalungkot na naman yung anak ko talaga na inaantay talagang face-to-face -face learning sa Ateneo. Dahil talaga hindi sila natutuwa sa online. Alright? Talaga naman ang motivation talaga mababa. Well, with high hopes that the pandemic would end soon, itong batang si Ella looked forward to bonding with her classmates and teachers on campus again. Siyempre, sino ba naman ang hindi, right? Because we only need to be hopeful that, you know, 
it's still it's gonna happen for everyone okay na babalik din tayo sa normal na well hindi man sa norm the way that we really were kasi meron ng mga improvements actually but almost normal all right <laughs> okay okay so Mas maganda po sana face-to-face kung walang pandemic. Natsa-challenge po ako sa mga classmates ko na matatalino. Yan ang sabi ni Ella. Face-to-face classes are better if there's a pandemic. I feel challenged by my, sp- my smart classmates to do better. Okay? Very good. So, about that, okay, so, yan ang ating pinag-usapan tungkol sa remote learning at yung mga contention at mga mga naisip na gawin ng mga ibang mga mag-aaral para tumulong sa kanilang mga <clears throat> sa kanilang mga classmates, right? So, yun nga kasi, di ba? Nagkaroon tuloy na academic dishonesty, okay? That wherein uh, some students were paying others to do their academic work, okay? Of course, that is a form of dishonesty or cheating. Academic dishonesty is any type of cheating that happens in relation to a formal academic exercise. Well, di natin nga maiwasan yun kasi nga because of yung sakadamihan masyado maraming assignment or masyado maraming activities. So, anong, anong inisip na solution dito, okay? Philippine Business for Education or PBE, the Executive Director, Love Basilote, said that academic integrity is a challenge in remote learning. Talaga naman eh, kasi nga hindi natin sila nakikita, hindi natin sila kaharap. So, ano lang yan, eh, honor system, di ba, ang pag-aaral online or distance learning. Basilote said this could be solved by investing in digital education because assessment technologies are improving every day, which means giving students access to digital learning devices and the internet. Pero yun na nga ang problema eh. Hindi lahat may internet, hindi lahat may gadget. Okay? Sabi pa ni Basilote, she also said that the government should push for the safe return of students to school. This was echoed by Alliance of Concerned Teachers or ACT Secretary General Raymond Basilio saying that classrooms should be reconfigured to enable physical distancing. Eh, yun na nga rin ang problema. Yung mga skwela, kunyari kahit nasabihin na ni Presidente bukas, buksan na natin yung face-to-face. Ready na ba yung mga, yung mga paaralan? Meron na ba sila mga safety and, and health precautions? Okay. Hindi, right? Uh, mga classrooms should be reconfigured na before we go back to face-to-face learning, okay? So that it can enable physical distancing. He added that the government should also prioritize constructing hand-washing facilities and comfort rooms in school as well as hiring of school nurses. Kasi nga, pag nag- bumalik na tayo sa face-to-face studies, Siyempre, andiyan pa rin yung virus, right? So we still have to 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 make it not not ergonomically, ano, for the students, but safe, health, safe and healthy for the students. So kahit na pumasok tayo, ando doon pa rin yung pwede ka maghugas ng kamay, may may alcohol, right? Or or may social distancing pa rin sa mga upuan. He added that the government should prioritize constructing these things, okay? Basilio also emphasized that the students engage in this kind of activity, yung pagchichiting, because that lessons are not really designed for self-learning. The main reason na nakikita namin dito ay yung kahirapan talaga ng mga mag-aaral na gawin yung mga performance tasks, gawin yung mga activities na pinagagawa sa kanila, lalo na sa modular learning. Dahil nga, hindi naman talaga designed for self-learning ang mga materials. Totoo ka. Like, like I said, hindi handa ng transition, pati yung curriculum, pati yung mga learning materials, that would have taken months, even years, to, to fix and finish. Pero may nadali. Kung ano na lang yun nandyan, yun ang ginamit, right? The main reason why this is happening is that students are having a hard time accomplishing the performance tasks because the materials are not actually designed for self, self-learning. Sabi ni San Antonio that yung distance learning setup is the perfect time to teach honesty among students. Kasi nga, honor system eh, right? But with students' desperation to pass their subjects amidst an overwhelming workload, can we blame them for engaging in this kind of academic dishonesty? Yung pagbabayad sa ibang tao para gawin yung trabaho, right? Masisisi mo ba ang mga nag-aaral ng modular or whether online or modular? 
students, teachers, and parents can only hope for more sound policies in the education sector, especially since there is still no end in sight for face uh, for online distance learning. We we, we don't we don't expect it to return to normal soon. Okay. Uh, I'd like to okay welcome questions please to the floor. Please feel free to ask questions either through here habang live tayo nagla live stream pwede naman yung i-type yung questions nyo or you can message me or messenger me or message me on Facebook okay uh, immediately after po no ng ating live stream broadcast po our shows are migrated to YouTube meron na pong YouTube channel ang Broad Streamcast Communicators wherein you can you can ba, pwede nyo balikan ang aming mga past episodes sa mga na-miss nyo po na mga episodes namin at lahat ng mga programa dito, pwede po nyo kami mahanap sa YouTube. And when you do, please like and subscribe po para, para, para palagi na tayo magkaka, magkakaroon ng communication between us at ma, 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 papanood nyo po yung aming mga programa na sinusuporta nyo. Maraming maraming salamat po. So yeah, why do Philippine schools remain closed a year into the pandemic? Sinabi na natin yung reason. And online and distance learning, how we are coping. This is what we've been talk about, talking about since last week and on to this week because it is such a broad topic and there are so many uh, things to consider in this distance learning, okay? Of course, in connection to that, pag-uusapan natin man next week yung tungkol sa mga learning management systems, okay? Discovering the learning management systems and what they are, what's their purpose in this pandemic situation na distance learning, okay? Um, ah, may nagtanong dito. Regarding do sa mga errors, okay, sa mga, sa mga materials, okay? Okay, I'd like to cite some instance, instances. Mistakes were made yung sa errors do sa DepEd ng distance learning materials. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Here are some of the instances when the DepEd shared incorrect information to millions of Filipino students. Nakakaiyak naman talaga ito nangyari na to, okay? Nung the opening of classes, it was delayed last year twice to allow schools, teachers, students, and parents to prepare for the demands of distance learning. But the postponements, it seemed, were not enough to ensure that the education department's learning materials were error-free. Of course, obviously so, it was not error-free. Kahit dinalay na nga, October na nga pumasok yung mga bata, may mali-mali pa rin, okay? Uh, sabi pa ba naman ng, ng Education Undersecretary Diosdado San Antonio, he admitted that not all modules prepared last year underwent quality assurance. Bakit ganun? Bakit hinayaan nilang nilang uh, hindi na nagpas na inspection? Saka mamadaling mag-online education or modular education, pinint na lang basta, hindi pinofeed lahat. Mali naman siguro yun. Kahit na inamin nyo, Diyos ko, eh, malaking pagkakamali at kasi kaingota naman yun na hindi i-edit at hindi i-proofread. Basta lang ma-print at meron ng mapag-aralan. Eh, mali yung tinuturo. My goodness, okay? Here are some of the instances when the DepEd shared incorrect information to millions of Filipino students. Painful grammatical errors. In one of the Dep TV episodes aired in August last year for a test broadcast, Filipinos online spotted a grammar error in a sample questionnaire for grade level, grade eight level English courses. Students were asked to define the word picturesque, but it was used incorrectly in the sentence. Sige, pakita ko nga. Mandali. Pakita ko yung mali, ha? Uh, patience is a virtue. Sandali lang po. I'm just gonna have to grab it again. Pasensya na muna. Okay, pakikita natin tong problema na to na nakakaiyak. Okay? Alright. Naririnig ko yung stomach ko, nagugutom na ako. <laughs> okay? Alright. I'll, I'll just show you, okay? Let me go back here. Okay? Kunin natin ulit. Pakita natin yung mga pagkakamali na ng DepEd materials, okay? Na ano last year. Okay. Ayan. 
Oh my gosh. Ayan. All right. Ito, look. Ayan. Okay. The word picturesque was asked. Okay. What does picturesque mean? Charming, running, ruined, perhaps. <clears throat> okay. So, look at this. Okay. Students were asked to define the word picturesque. But it was used incorrectly in the sentence. And the sentence, Tagaytay City is known for wonderful picturesque of the majestic Mount Taal. What does picturesque mean? Inay, dito ginamit nila parang wonderful picture of the, hindi naging picturesque eh. Wonderful picture. Eh dapat yan, adjective siya eh. Di ba? Is ko hindi noun. Kung picture of the majestic Bakaal, you know? One correct way to rewrite the sentence would have been, Tagaytay City is known for the picturesque Mount Taal. Well, the, 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 the Dep Ed said the grammatically incorrect material was due to typing error and assured the public it would not happen. Again, eh, na nga, eh, yung typographical errors, dapat ina-edit pa rin, sinecheck muna, di ba, bago i-print. Hello? Unfortunately, learning module mishaps continue to surface on social media since then. Ito. Okay? Parami ng parami itong mga maling to. Sakit sa mata, right? Masakit sa bangs. Okay? Ito pa. Let me show you one more. Ito naman, math. My gosh. It, this is a math uh, lesson. Teka lang. Kunin ko ulit. Alright. Okay? Sus mio. Simple math problem. Okay, let me just Grab it again. Okay. Nakakaiyak naman itong mga mali na to. Okay. Alright. Konting ano lang. Konting patience lang po. Okay. Oh, here. Look at this one. Okay. Alright. Ito naman. Alright. Okay, yan. In a simple math problem aired on DepEd TV last Tuesday, netizens were quick to point out the wrong solution in solving an equation. Imagine, look at that. Yan ang sa mga learning materials. Yan ang nakalagay. Okay? In math, dividing any number by zero is not possible because its result would be undefined. Diba? O, oh, tingnan nyo itong equation. Two times is equal to zero. In math, dividing any number by zero is not possible because nga, its result would be undefined. The reason that the result of a division by zero is undefined is the fact that any attempt at a definition leads to a contradiction. An online lesson from the University of Utah explained, the correct way of solving the problem is to divide both sides of the equation by two. Then x is zero. In a statement, uh, ulit, Pasco apologized for the mistake again and urged the public not to single out their mistake. Diba yan? Marami pa, marami pang mga, mga de defective na materials. Okay? On October 7 last year, si Christine Joy Hebrado Rivera, a mother of a grade 1 student, okay, in a public school sa Rizal, was very baffled by a question in a learning module. Okay? Ito pa which ask about the sound of an airplane. The choices were, another one sound the airplane, the choices were, wing, 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 A, B, eng, 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 C, we, 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 at yung D, pip, 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 okay? Because none of her family members could help her out, she decided to post a photo of the question on Facebook, hoping that someone could come up with an answer. Mali lang ha, pag gusto niyo makita, sandali. Sige, tanggalin na natin itong si math problem. Okay? Kunin naman natin si what is the sound of an airplane. Alright, tingnan natin. Okay? Ito talaga, ito yung school material. Ito yung actual material sa skwela. Ha? Yung ginagamit. Kakaloka. Alright, let's show it again. Alright, here it is. Okay, let me just grab it again. 
for you guys. Okay. Okay, counting. Ano na? Ito na, ito na, ito na. Wala pang one minute, okay? I will just breeze right through, okay? Um, ayan. Oops. Ito, okay. Ayan. Yan naman yung katanungan, alright? Ayan, okay, oh. What is the sound? Ano ang, ano ang sound na airplane? Pagmasdan ang laraw, ane, pagmasdan ang larawan ng sasakyan, anong tunog ang nililikha nito? Okay. Anong tunog ang nililikha nito? Well, weng, 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 eng, 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 wee, 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 o pipip, pipip, pipip. Ano kaya ang sound ng airplane? Bro? Parang, parang none of the above, right? Okay. What indeed among the choices would be the sound of an airplane? All right. So, anong klaseng, di ba? Mali-mali, ganyan. So, none of the above talagang answer dyan because that's not the sound of an airplane at all. So, so maraming mga mali sa materials ang nangyari. Okay? Na, nasabi ng the Aped, of course, by now, I can correct na. Sana naman, right? So, those are the things that we were came across with ng mga problema sa distance learning, lalong-lalo na sa modular learning. Right? So, um, alright. Uh, yung mga, okay, uh, here's some information regarding CHED. Private universities may adjust to August calendar as schools, schools propose late class opening. Well, uh, as of today, Balita ko, ang, 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 ang umpisa ng school year 2021 to 2022 is gonna be in August, late August, right? Hindi ba, Jake? Sabi mo yan, August 24, 26? Kasi pinagpilian yun eh, August 24 or 26. Wala akong kalendaryo. Uh, to, or September 3 or September 13. Wala kasi akong kalendaryo. Pa, pakiabot nga ng calendar, please. Ang aking mabutihing asawa. Thank you very much. Salamat. Okay. So, ang sinabi pinipiling date was either August you know, August 25 is a Monday. So, baka yan. Or sabi na September 6. At pinakalate na September uh, 15. Pero, ang, ang, I think ang napiling pasukan ay August. Kasi by now, mas mabuti na rin yung mga materials for school. Sana nga, sana nga, right? But, so, uh, in, in, um, to wrap this up, of course, okay, we have been talking about how the pandemic situation and how we are coping with distance learning dito sa Pilipinas and of course, pinag-usapan din natin in Asia or, or around the world kung how people are coping up with this online education and modular education, distance learning per se. And, we we talked about the problems that we we came up with at saka yung mga solutions na na pinramis na gagawin but of course by na, by now more than a year and a half of, uh, into that better na yung dapat yung mga materials printed or or digital right so tapos you know pinag-usapan din natin yung mga costs na nag na nagkaroon ng added cost because of uh, distance learning. Yun na nga, yung kinailangan ng internet connection, yung iba nagpakabit ng internet. Of course, yung mga iba, bumili ng mga gadgets, right? But the most important thing is, of course, the, the, the reason behind that is, of course, yung good uh, intention ng ating gobyerno at ng DepEd na walang maiwanan at walang hindi makakapag aral even in this pandemic. Pero sad to say nga, a lot of students dropped out and didn't enroll last school year because nga, they were still they're still trying to test the waters and see inantay nila baka sakaling bumalik na sa normal at yun na nga yung kakulangan ng means na makapag-aral online or even yung modular yung mga magulang na na walang oras para i-google turuan yung mga anak nila or to even submit and pick up the modules so those are the things that happened, okay, that, that were concern, that were the concern, okay. So, um, of course, 
sinabi noon ng Pangulo na pagka nagkaroon na ng vaccine sa, sa bansa at na-vaccinate na ang certain number of people, pwede na tayong bumalik sa face-to-face. -face. Pero of course, hindi nangyari yun because na may mga bagong variant yung virus. So, hinabuti pa rin ang ating presidente na wag pa rin buksan ang face-to-face -face learning. Okay? Uh, so, um, for, for those who are still uh, wanting to know more or or gustong balikan yung mga pinag-usapan natin this past weeks, please, we are on, we, uh, Broad Streamcast Communicators already has a Facebook, uh, I'm a Facebook, a YouTube channel. Please punta po kayo doon, like and subscribe. Pwede nyo pong balikan yung mga uh, pinag-usapan natin tungkol dito sa distance learning. Tapos meron nagtanong, how will the new tax rule affect private school operations? All right? Well, uh, kasi may bagong tax rule, okay? Pero para sa more questions po, sasagutin natin yan next week tungkol na mga dyan, sa iba pang mga bagay-bagay tungkol sa pag-aaral. Just please field your questions through either my Facebook page or my Instagram, my, my, my LinkedIn, my Twitter page, or simply message me on Messenger or dito mismo sa Broad Screencast Communicators. Padala niyo po yung mga katanungan niyo. Uh, ito, ito kasi yung tungo sa how will the tax rule affect private school operations when I text sa akin. Kasi an organization of private schools in the Philippines said the new tax policy, which, which would impose a devastating 25% corporate income tax on them, will, will hit parents the hardest. Ay, ano ba yun yan? Diyos ko. Mahal na ngayon tuition, dadagdagan pa. The Bureau of Internal Revenue's Regulation 5 to 2021 will impose a 25% corporate in income tax on private schools. Oh my God. Canceling the 1% rate offered by the pandemic rescue package of the corporate recovery and tax incentives for enterprises. Ano ba yan? The Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations called for the immediate rectification of the regulation if not rectified how would the new tax rule affect the operations of private schools as well as the parents talaga naman eh. last thursday o kahapon july 8 rapplers education reporter bod bonds magsambol talks to coco Paya managing director joseph noel estrada about the implications of the rr 5 2021 on private schools well para sa kasagutan niyan next week na lang okay aalamin pa natin more on the, the tax rule na i-impose sa private schools. Natakot naman ako dyan. Dahil of course, affected ako dyan at ang aking pag-aaral ng aking anak. Pero maraming maraming salamat po uh, sa mga tumutok dito past weeks regarding distance learning. Okay? Meron pa rin tayo pong mga problemang kinakaharap and tinatry at solusyonan. But of course, we can only hope that, okay, that it will get better and better. And, and, until masanay na tayong lahat dito sa distance learning, okay? Ay, pero yun lang talaga. Ang medyo hindi ka patawad-patawad is yung mali-maling learning materials, no? Please, just ko, kaya kayo nagbabayad ng mga entriado na para mag-edit, mag-proofread, gawin ng trabaho mas mabuti, please. Kasi kawawa naman yung ating mga kaaral. Nabibigyan ng maling information at maling aralin, right? So anyway, this has been Jay Bautista talking about distance learning and uh, which is mainly online learning, of course, digital learning and printed learning and also radio and TV. Ayan po iba-ibang modes ng pag-aaral na, na ginagamit natin ngayon sa Pilipinas. We were, we were talking about that, how we are coping in this pandemic with this distance learning. Okay? Tinakal po natin yung mga problema, tinakal natin yung mga solusyon. So we can only be always hopeful that things are going to get even better. Okay? At yan nga, because hindi na naman tayo pa rin, hindi pa rin tayo babalik sa face-to-face -face learning, dito pa rin tayo sa distance learning. Okay? For now. Of course, we have to make the most out of it because this is our system and our way of learning and, and educating our, our children now, distance learning. So please lang, Yung mga, yung DepEd po, yung materials, yung printed materials, check yung mga mali para wag nang, wala nang mali. Hindi dapat okay nag-apologize, nag makalimutan ko na kung sino, na 
mayroong mga typos or whatever, that is no excuse, di ba? Because mayroong dapat, uh, dapat tayong quality control at nagpo-proofread ng mga material. So, so okay. <clears throat> so, why did the Philippine schools remain closed a year into the pandemic? It's because of the variant viruses that are here. And the, how are we coping with this distance learning? We are coping quite well, but we are still, of course, maraming nangyari. Maraming naapektuhan na estudyante nitong pag, pag hindi pa face-to-face, -face, psychological and mentally. We will also tackle that next week regarding the psychological implications, mental implications of studying online or, or distance learning has created or has given or has emerged sa mga estudyante na gaal. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, happy weekend po. Okay. Na, na for some of us, of course, na working from home, Walang difference ang weekend at weekday, no? Trabaho, trabaho, trabaho. But anyway, keep the faith, keep the hope, and the love alive always in your hearts, please. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Maraming maraming salamat po. This is Din Jay Bautista, Buhay Online. Sa Monday na pambalik ko. Thank you very much. Inyong natuhayan at napakinggan ang mga makabagong pamamaraan sa mundo ng online. Sa pamamagitan pa rin ng Broad Streamcast Communicators, hanggang sa muli, maraming salamat po. Nakalimuto ko sabihin, belated happy birthday, Kitty Tuwili Baluyot, and also uh, Presi Kahapon, and of today, Gigi Twinjan Lim. Bye-bye, thank you.